Alright, we're on page 408. We're going to be working on 408 and 409. But I'd like for you to take out uh, the cards from page 397 to 400. Um, if you don't have those, um, let's say this. Re refer to this. You're welcome to um, screenshot this. Um, or just refer back to this. So this is like around 30 seconds in the video. So this, we have six cards here, A through F. And then another six, uh, G through L. We'll need that later. Um, but anyways, for now, <clears throat> we're gonna work on determining whether a relation is a function. We have four problems, but two parts to each. We're gonna determine for number one, whether these mappings are functions, these tables are functions, sequences are functions or um uh, these sets so uh that's pretty much what we're working on then and then we'll use those cards for the next activity on page 409 okay but let's start with the mapping um we're going to determine whether each is a function and then a brief reason why so we're going to have like yes or no function or not um and that's pretty much it so let's start with number one a so um we have our domain of 10, 11, 12, 13, and a range of 1,000, 2, and 3,000. Um, does each input have one output? So that's the question we're going to be asking for each one. Does each input have one output? That's the only thing that, um, in order for something to be a function, that's the thing that it has to satisfy. Okay, so for number one, uh, mapping A, this has one, one output, 11 has one output, 12 has one output and 13 has one output. Those outputs that they have, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that both of them share an output of a thousand because um, as long as they, each input has one output, that's fine. So when, when I think of functions, I think of like a vending machine. You can think of the input as like money, but I'm gonna think of the input as like the button that you press on the vending machine. And the output is whatever snack or drink you get from it. So what this is saying is, if I press the button for 10, right, I should get this output. If I press the button for 11, I should get an output of 1,000. So that button works because if I press 10, I'm not gonna get something else. Um, but you know how there, there are vending machines that have multiple of the same item uh, for you know a couple buttons that you press. So anyways, this we're gonna say, yes, it is a function. <clears throat> comma, um, each input has one output. Has one output. And this might be like, uh, we're gonna be writing this quite a bit, so we'll think of, there's gonna be other things that we write in lieu of this. All right, let's move on to mapping B. Is this a function? So, right, for you, try to figure this out, pause the video, this, is not a function. The reason it's not a function is this is this 12 here. This 12 has two different outputs of 2,000 and 3,000. So what this says is if I press the button for 12, one day I should get a 2,000 as coming out of this vending machine. But the next day I go back, I press this 12, I get a 3,000. This vending machine does not work. I'm getting something else rather than the thing that I requested. So this is not a function. Comma, we're gonna say that 12 maps to two different outputs to 2,000 and 3,000. <clears> All right. And I think it's, it's nice to look at mappings. Mappings, I think, are one of the easier things to compare whether something is, whether a relation is a function or not a function. Um, right, we can convert these other things like a table to a mapping. But um, let's go ahead and determine this. So table A, right? Does each input have one output? So a negative two has one output of four, negative one has one output of one, zero has one output, one has one output, two has one output. All right, that is, this is, yes, it is a function. Um, and again, we're gonna put the same reason. Each input has one output. Whoops. Okay, there. <clears throat> and then table B. 
Um, this actually is not a function. Um, the reason it's not a function is because this two here. This two, when, when we go to the vending machine and press two, we should get a negative four that comes out of this vending machine. But we go back the next day, we press the same button two, and we get something else. Instead of a negative four, we get a positive four. So that is the reason that it doesn't work out. But another reason that it doesn't work out is this one. I press the one, I should get a negative one as an output. But I go back the next day and I get a, a positive one as the output. So this is not a function. We're gonna say no. And the reason is we're gonna say that two maps to negative four and positive four. Um, and um, one maps to negative one and positive one. So multiple inputs have multiple outputs. That cannot happen. Okay. <clears throat> All right. And then number three. Number three, we're looking at sequences. So we, we talked about sequences as an order list of objects. Um, or you can call this a set. But for this, we do have a pattern here. It looks like we're adding three every single time. Right, this is the first term, second term, third, fourth, and fifth. So what I just wrote there, right, one, two, three, four, five, those are the inputs, the position of each number. Um, and the outputs are the numbers themselves, seven, 10, 13, 16, 19. Each input does have one output, so we're gonna say yes. We're gonna write it as each x, right, these are x's, um, has one y. Well, that's a little bit easier thing to write. <clears throat> All right, and then sequence B, let's write the same thing. One, two, all the way to five. All right. Now, does each input have one output? Even though, right, one has an output of 10, three has an output of 10, and five has an output of 10, they all have the same output, that's perfectly fine because we can also see that right two has an output of 30 and four has an output of 30. Um, it's fine if the y's repeat it's not okay if the x's repeat so this we're gonna say is yes um, no x is repeated right there, there was only one 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 two three four and a five so yes each x has one y and to prove this you don't have to put this but if i put a mapping diagram Right, one, two, three, four, five. And the only different outputs we have are a 10 and a 30. Let's put that in order. All right, one connects to 10, two connects to 30, three connects to 10, four connects to 30, and the last one, five connects to 10. You can see that each one of the X's here has only one arrow coming from it. So that is an output. Although they might share the same output, that's fine. Every input has one output. All right, and then moving on to the last one, which is similar to a table, but it's a list of ordered pairs, um, is a set. Okay, so we have X's and Y's. So I think it's, it's helpful when you're determining this is to highlight the X's. So I'm gonna highlight this. Oof, okay. So the X's are only twos. Um, this is definitely not an out, uh, not a function. So we're gonna say that this is no. Um, two maps to um, multiple outputs. Okay. So we're saying when we when we press the button for two, we get a three. Okay. But next day we get a four, five when we press that same exact button, a six and a seven. That cannot happen. This has a mapping diagram. Um, the outputs or the inputs are two, only two. And the outputs are three, four, five, six, and seven. This maps to every single one. So if a function is every output has, or sorry, every input has one output, this has five outputs. So this definitely cannot work. <clears throat> All right, and then the last one here for set B on number four, let's highlight our inputs. 
Okay, so is this a function? I'll, I'll underline the outputs, the y values. So when I press the button for two, I get a one. When I press the button for three, I get a one, four, I get a one, five, I get a one, six, I get a one. Okay, so does each input have one output? This is yes. This is a function. Although every output was the same, we don't care about that, right? Every out input has one output. Um, so let's just write that. Each input has one output. This is pretty much the only reason when you have a function, right? This is like, I don't know if you've ever seen a vending machine that maybe sells all of the same thing, right? But when you see a vending machine, you already have the buttons all here. And then you have all the stuff over here and it's just like all like literally hot Cheetos. I'll put C for Cheetos. That's fine, right? As long as each button goes to represents for, for each slot in the vending machine and it doesn't give you like a different slot. So that perfectly fine. They all have the same output. They all have hot Cheetos, um, works out. All right, so that was enough practice. Um, the only thing we haven't really worked on determining functions are things that we've worked on in the past is a graph. And that's what we're gonna need for the next part. So for this, if you don't have it, um, go to page, or you should have already um, cut out and have these cards, page 397 to 400. If not, maybe go to the 30 second mark in this video and you should see the cards there. Okay, but anyways, before we get to that, let's talk about this next and last vocabulary term uh, for this video. And this is called the vertical line test. So vertical line, right, that's vertical. Put arrowheads here. This is how you determine whether a graph is a function or not. So it's a, it's a visual method to determine, the, to determine whether a relation represents a, a graph as a graph is a function. To apply the vertical line test, Consider all of the vertical lines that you can draw on a graph of relation. When any vertical line intersects the graph more than once, or more, more than one point, the relation is not a function. So if it can cross more than one point, it is not a function. Okay, that's the key thing there. If it crosses it only once, then it's a function, it's fine. So the worked example. Uh, we have a scatter plot of four points here. Um, right, you could have this line. If I were to take that line and move it anywhere, when I, when I say the graph, I just mean the four points. I don't mean like the X and Y axis. If I draw it here, notice it only intersects one point. So that's fine. That's a function. And if I just put it here, it's a function. But if I put that line right here, if we can find at any place, the graph intersects in two space, two places, like here and here, it fails the vertical line test. It can only cross at once. This is like saying, um, the reason this is not a function, like let's say you don't, um, this is time and this is distance from your home. Right? We, we've done an example like this. What this says is like in four hours, you are one mile from your home and four miles from your home. So think about that. At the same time, you're in two different locations. That is not possible. It's not possible for you to be one mile from your home and also four miles at your home at the exact same time. Um, so anything that's vertical is never a function. So number one, use the function, use the definition function to explain why the vertical line test um, works. Um, when the vertical line passes through two points, um, you map, and x value to more than one y value. And what I mean by this, so if I draw the ordered pair here, this is four, one. And this here, this is four, four. So what we mean is we when we press the button for four, right, I should get a one, but I come back the next day, I press the button for four, and I get a four, so that is not a function. And because it is a vertical line, uh, that's why it fails the vertical line test. So um, that's the reason it works. We have two different outputs of four and one, okay. Anyways, 
Um, we're gonna move on to number two for this last part of the video. It says use the 12 cards you sorted in the previous lesson. We're looking whether they're discrete or, or continuous. Um, and it says sort the, the graphs into two groups, functions and non-functions. Use the letters of each group to record your findings. So we're gonna be writing letters A through, um, I don't know, L in here. So we're, I'm going to be referring to, I'm not going to do all of them, where I'm going to do about the first six, and you're going to do the, the, the next and last six. So um, let's, let's, I'm going to be switching my screen back and forth. So let's look at, at, oops, that's not it. Let's look at this. So I drew a vertical line here. This is um, A through F. And let me go through A here. Right, If I take this vertical line, and I'm just going to move this line, right? I'm only looking at these four black dots. I'm not looking at the y-axis. I'm not looking at the x-axis. But if I put my line right here, this in only intersects the point once. If I put it here, only intersects once, only intersects once, only intersects once. So A is a function. I'll put Y here for yes. Okay, let's go to B. Right, if I put my line anywhere here, I've got to find if it crosses more than once. If it crosses one, it's fine, but it cannot cross more than once. So if I put it here, it only intersects that, that diagonal black line only once. Okay. Oof, give me one second. All right, here we go. <clears throat> right, if I move this line, Mm. Looks like it's not staying in place. Okay. All right, if I move this line, it, it's only intersecting that black line once. So this is a function. All right, let's keep going. Let's go to C, this U shape. All right, if I put it here, only intersects once. Here, only once, here, only once. So C is also a function. So A, B, and C are all functions, great. But let's go to D. Is this a function? Right, if I put it right here, like at the very edge, we call it that is a tangent to it. It only intersects once. But if I move that further along, like right there, that intersects the circle at two different locations, um, right here, and right here. So that does not work. This is no. Um, so let's go and switch back. Let's at least put A, B, and C as yes, and D for no. Okay. All right, and let's finish off on, on E and F. All right, let me take this line. Okay, let's zoom in. Right, this black line and this, this well, not black line, black curve and red line, it only ever intersects once. It does not intersect in two different locations. So this is a yes, it's a function. And let's move on to F. So this, if I put this line through right here, it goes through all three points that are on F. So this is no. So E is yes, F is no. Okay, E is yes, F is no. And now I'd like for you to try to figure out the remaining um, the remaining parts here for G, F, I, J, or sorry, G, H, I, J, K, L. Um, which one of those are yes, which one of those are no. Um, and that is pretty much it. Let me know if you have questions.